that we do not have a class on the 1st of the May, okay? Last class, we have handled the basic concept of the diffusional course. And for the evaluation of the growth rate, usually we assume that the local equilibrium between the parent's pace and uh, product pace. The meaning of the local equilibrium is that the concentration at the pace boundary is given by the equilibrium concentration uh, that we can obtain in the equilibrium pace diagram. So I also mentioned that, then I also mentioned about the deviation from the local equilibrium. When the deviation of local equilibrium occur, the basic assumption of the local equilibrium is that there is no difficulty for atom to across the interface because there is no difference in the chemical potential across the interface. But sometimes we have to supply the driving force for atom to across the interface. At that case, the equilibrium concentration of parents or in this case, the product phase is very sharp free energy curve, so it concentration is fixed. But in this case, we have the interface concentration have to move along this line to supply additional driving force for atom to across the interface. So when we assume the local equilibrium, the, the concentration of interface given by this point and this point. But when there is a necessity for the additional driving force for atom to move across the interface, the concentration of interface is starting to deviate from the equilibrium value. So in extreme case, all of the driving force is consumed by interface reaction, then the interface concentration approaches to its original composition. So in this case, we call the reaction is purely controlled by interface reaction. But in this case, we say it, the reaction is diffusion controlled. So from now on, I would like to focus on the growth rate of diffusion control direction. It means that we assume the local equilibrium between parent space and the product space. <coughs> Let's think again the concentration profile during the growth. Here, the beta phase, which is growing inside of the alpha. And this is alpha phase. And for the growth, for the growth of beta phase, some amount of atom should be supplies to satisfy the concentration of the beta phase. So the atom should be supplied to this, this direction, right? And uh, supplying of the atom is controlled by the diffusion of that atom in alpha phase, right? So, When we assume that the velocity of the interface given by V 
땡. 땡. This amount of atom should be supplied per unit time, per unit area of for the growth of beta phase. Right? That is the difference around this point and this point and the velocity of interface is B. So this amount of atom should be supplied. Okay? Everyone clear? So how those kind those amount of atom is applies? By diffusion. So the flux of diffusion is <clears throat> the flux of diffusion should keep pace with the growth. Okay. So this is this relationship is called flux balance equation for the growth of the new phase. The solute should be supplied and the supplying is controlled by the diffusion. So what we are interested in is to evaluate V. When we know the V, that means we know the growth rate, right? So what we want to get, what we want to obtain is V. So if we know the concentration profile of the solute in alpha, then by differentiating with concentration with position, then we can evaluate the growth rate B. Okay? That is the basic concept to obtain the growth rate of the product phase which grows by diffusion or mechanism. To obtain the concentration profile, we have to solve this diffusion equation with proper boundary condition. In this case, what, it, what will be the boundary condition? When x goes infinite, c goes c0. x goes c. c means that the position of the interface. When x goes to C, then concentration goes to Cm. Right? So with this boundary condition, we solve the diffusion equation and then put concentration profile to flux balance equation. Then finally we can get the growth rate. Okay. <clears throat> For the one dimensional growth in binary alloy, the growth rate is given by this formulation. 
So in this class, what I want to do is write this formulation. When you look at just the physical meaning of this relationship is that when you look at this equation, this is fixed value, right? If you know the phase diagram, you can easily evaluate this one. This is given by the concentration of the phase boundary. So this, when temperature and pressure is fixed, then you can have this value. This is called the supersaturation. And simply, this equation is nonlinear equation with respect to alpha. Here, P is a constant. P is a constant which is related to the geometry. When P is 1, this equation is planar, planar gross. When P is 2, is, it is equation for the cylindrical shape of the product phase. When P is 1, 2, 3, 3, then it is the gross of spherical shape product phase. So you do not have any concern about P. So actually this is a nonlinear equation about alpha. So what is alpha? Alpha is given by this equation, this relationship. The position of the interface and time and alpha is constant. So the meaning of the what the, the meaning of knowing alpha is that we know the position of the interface with respect to time. So we can evaluate the growth rate. Okay? So let's drive how this relation come out. Frankly speaking, I drive this equation once a year for the lectures. So yesterday I uh, have a practice. But basic rule is I follow the slide and if you are all very smart, so I think you do not have any difficulty to follow this equation, but I add some explanation to, for the, uh, to help your understanding. Here, this is fixed second law, and this is governing equation we have to solve, right? So, this is somewhat slightly different form from the usual value, but it is simply the same when you put one, two, three as a geometric vector. So when you put one, you simply have the form you are familiar with. And when you put one, you simply have this kind of one-dimensional fixed second law. And actually, when you put 2 and P3, and this equation becomes the governing equation of the diffusion in cylindrical or spherical shape of the uh, product phase. Anyway, this is a general form, so let's start with this. Then we can expand. depending on the geometry of the product page. To solve this differential equation, at first we, the first thing we have to do is put the variable transformation. Variable S with 
r over square root t. Why we have to put, why we have to do those kind of variable transformation? <coughs> Actually, to solving the partial difference equation is a kind of the experienced way. So in many times ago, many mathematical, the, the, the people who work on mathematics try many ways to solve this kind of equation. So they finally found uh, if we make a variable transformation like this one, we can solve it. Actually, the, when you look at the final form of the solution, then the variable r, uh, variable r and t always should have this kind of relation. Otherwise, otherwise, that cannot be a solution of this diffusional equation. So let's start with this variable transformation. Then the concentration, which depends on position and time, will be a simple one variable function. Right? So with this relationship, Let's drive partial C over partial time with this chain rule. Then the concentration, first derivative of concentration, uh, first differential of concentration with respect to time, then you can have this kind of form by chain rule. Okay? And secondary. The concentration with position, R is the same meaning with uh, X, but we write R for more general concept. Usually X means the, what, just one dimension, right? So anyway, we, if we evaluate this term, you can have this one. And also the second difference with second difference of this term, and you can have finally this kind of one. So now we can change this differential equation with respect to variable, single variable S, right? So let's see how it changes. So just put all the previous relationship with the fixed second law, and you can have this equation. And after some arrangement, finally, you can have this kind of form with this one. It looks complicated, but if you follow the formulation once, then you can easily understand. With this relationship, if you put This term with another function, gs, just put the name of the function. Then this relationship converted into this form. And finally, you can obtain this equation. So now we convert the partial difference equation into ordinary difference equation. <coughs> the procedure is, seems to be complicated, but it's a kind of mathematical skill. So I think you do not worry about it. You, most of, 
all of you are smarter than me, then you have no difficulty to follow. Any question? No? Okay. So, what we have to do is to solve this ordinary equation, ordinary differential equation, and the solution is already given. <coughs> the solution is given by this exponential term. So the ordinary differential equation is ds d g s plus d d o s g s equal zero and g s when you solve it g s is okay, exponential for d over s square. You can confirm whether this is a solution or not. You just put this value into this original equation. Then you can find this is the solution. Right? Here, GS is originally has the form P minus 1. P S over D C. All right. So when you put this to this, then C and. C is K S one minus P exponential minus four D over S square. <coughs> so now we have the differential equation of concentration profile with respect to S. The solution of this one is C, general solution of this ordinary equation This is general equation for this <coughs> ordinary different uh, general solution for the ordinary differential equation. So we are here. So when we put this term as a pi s, pi p s. This is A plus B I P S. Okay. <coughs> so now we have the general solution of the concentration profile. And what we have to do next is to apply the boundary condition to fix the constant A and B 
to get getting the particular solution, right? So what is the boundary condition we have? When S goes infinite, then C goes C0, right? When S goes C root T, C is the position of the interface. Then C goes C M, right? So here, when S goes approaches to infinite, this term will be zero. Right? So the constant A should be C0. Okay? Are you clear? So CS C0. Yes. So as P exponential as O D S K D S. Then we apply. Now we apply the second boundary condition. When S goes to that. C equals CM. So CM equals C0 plus B T over C. Here, you have noticed that this value cm minus c0 is constant when the temperature is fixed. Then that, that value is given by the concentration of the boundary, phase boundary. Right? This, when we rewrite this one, this is in by this, right? So when the temperature is fixed, you can obtain these two values from the phase boundary, which means the equilibrium concentration. So this becomes constant. So that means that this value, the integration interval, the starting of integration interval should be constant. Clear? Not clear? If this value is not constant, there is no way for this term become constant, right? So we can write K 
to see over scale root t as alpha. Then when you put this pi p alpha similar to the pi p s, <coughs> then b will C M minus C zero pi P Okay, no? Oh reversed. So the final form of the concentration will be C equal C zero plus pi P alpha C M minus C zero pi P S. This is final form of our concentration profile. So now we have concentration profile. So what is the next stage? Sorry? Yeah, we have to apply this concentration profile to the flux balance equation to obtain the velocity. Again, the balance equation is C P minus C M V go D partial C C. Here again, the psi means the position of the interface. So here, the V is. Derivative of position with respect to time, right? If we put the position is position of interface psi, then when we take the first difference with respect to time, then we can obtain the velocity. And this is two t over is correct. Alpha. Because alpha root t. So when we when you take first difference with C see with time, then you can take this one. <coughs> so now we are here.
then we have to do is that evaluating the first step out of concentration with respect to variable s at position psi. Now, we already know the concentration profile is given by this one. And take the derivative with respect to s. This is con constant, so it will be disappear. And this is here. And the only thing you have to do is evaluating the derivative pi p with respect to s at position alpha. And finally, you can have this form. So by arranging with this one, by arranging this one, you have, finally, you will have this formulation. That is exactly the same formula I show the I show you at the beginning of this class. So now you can understand the meaning of p, alpha, and pi p, and so on. So as I mentioned, in the binary alloy system, you already know this value, which is called supersaturation. So this, when this is fixed, then the only thing you have to do is to solve this nonlinear equation with respect to alpha. Then when you have alpha, you can evaluating the location of the interface with this and everything is solved. Any question? Here, this graph I copied from some papers. And this is, actually this is omega, which is the degree of supersaturation. Supersaturation, because the author is different, so they use different nomenclature, different character for indicating the supersaturation. And here, eta is alpha over scalar to d is scaled alpha, scaled with scalar root d, right? So when we plot the eta, which is related to alpha, right? Alpha means the growth rate, indicating the growth rate, the constant indicating the growth rate, right? Here, alpha, right? We called it as a parabolic growth rate constant. 
So by plotting, by solving the previous equation, you have this kind of curve, which indicating the gross rate constant with respect to the supersaturation. As you can expect, the degree of supersaturation increase, then the growth rate increase. OK? Because those kind of the derivation of the exact solution is quite uh, not difficult, but time consuming. Sometimes you want to very quick evaluation, but not that exact, less with less accuracy. So for that purpose, we use, often use the linear gradient of approximation which is proposed by Jenner. So you are familiar, very familiar with this kind of uh, appro approximated solution. Here, we assume that linear concentration gradient ahead of the interface. By assuming this linear concentration gradient, the situation you have to handle is incredibly simplified. <clears throat> Starting with flux balance equation, you are already familiar with this equation and because we assume linear concentration profile, so it can represent with this one. Here x is the length of diffusion area. In previous slide, <coughs> this one. So the only thing you have to do is to evaluate that diffusion length. Then we, you can evaluate V with this term. So the way to evaluate diffusion length is that these two area should be the same. The amount of solute which diffuse out into parent space should be the amount of solute accumulated in parent space, right? So by equating these two area, you can evaluate the diffusion length. So here is the relationship, and from this relationship, you can evaluate delta x, which representing the diffusion length. And just put this value to this equation and rearrange the flux balance equation. Then finally, you can have this kind of form. Surprisingly, even though we have very simplified approximation with linear concentration gradient, the final form is very similar to the exact solution we just derived. Here, you can understand this term, except scaled to t, this term give you 
the parabolic growth rate constant alpha. Okay, so even though we assume very simplified form of concentration gradient, the underlying underlying physics can be captured. The movement of interface is proportional to the square root time, which means parabolic growth rate, parabolic growth. Those kind of concepts can be captured even with the simplified appro approach. So here we compare the exact solution and simplified linear concentration gradient. Here the solid line represents the exact solution. And this dot, dotted line, dotted line indicating the solution from the approximation. So you can see that the simplified approach is not that bad. Actually, it gives you quite reasonable way to evaluating the growth rate. Of course, this is for the linear R, planar growth, planar growth. But when we move to cylindrical or spherical shape of the uh, product phase, then the linear <coughs> gradient approximation may not be a good choice. So you have to remember that the applicability of those kind of simplified approximation strongly depend on the shape of the product phase. So this is the experimentally observed the probability rate constant and the this slope as you can see this x axis is the square root time and y axis is the thickness which represent to the psi and you can see that between these two variables the linear relationship is observed which means that the alpha value can be const can be regarded as a constant for given temperature as we expect from the calculation finally i would like to say in brief way the dissolution so far we have considered we have considered about the growth. But exactly the same way you can treat the dissolution of the particle. Here at first, let's see at temperature T, the system consists of alpha and beta. And then we hit the specimen into T2. Then the particle start to be dissolved. The particle beta will dissolve into alpha. Right? So dissolution rate, which corresponding to the growth rate in reverse way, can be evaluated the same way. The first thing you have to consider is how the concentration profile will be. Here the dotted line represent 
dotted line represent the initial condition. Here, the concentration of beta, and here the concentration of alpha, which given by the phase boundary at T. Then, when we heat up the specimen to T2, the concentration profile will be changed like this one, whereas the beta phase dissolved, this kind of concentration profile will be developed. Here, CM, CM is the concentration of alpha phase, <coughs> which is equilibrium with beta at temperature T. Okay. I clear with it? The meaning of CM. The CM is position, the position of CM in equilibrium phase diagram is here. And this is the concentration of alpha, which is equilibrium with beta at temperature T2. <coughs> okay, so you can expect this kind of concentration profile and the exact solution of dissolution rate is given by this equation, similar to the previous one. When you evaluating this omega, which is given by this value, actually this is constant when the temperature is fixed, then you can solve this equation to evaluate the position. Here the initial position psi zero, and it will be decreased when time elapses, right? Because we now we handle the dissolution. So the position of psi when you obtain alpha prime, you can evaluate with this relationship. Okay? And also, there is a way to treat this is as a linear approximate approach. I will put that problem in the second problem set, which I give you after the break. Okay, any question? Is there any student who have class uh, about 5 p.m.? Uh, it depends on day. How about Tuesday or Thursday? Yeah. Korean class. How about Monday? TM lab. TM lab. Okay. Tuesday. Wednesday. TM lab. Friday. 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 5 p.m. Oh. <laughs> but everyone, if everyone happy, I'm happy. We did. Okay, Friday, 5 p.m. How about earlier? Huh? Earlier morning. Earlier in the morning. I'm okay, but it depends on you. Mm. Mm. Difficult to find time. How about uh, when when will be the TM lab? Uh, Monday, Wednesday, from five to six. 
Monday to one day, one day, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Wednesday. Monday and Wednesday. Oh, then how, how about Tuesday? Korean Crest from five to six. Okay, then we can start six. Pardon? Six fifteen. Okay, then how about the evening? Seven after the dinner. Tuesday. Just one makeup class, so you do not worry about it. And I, I will pick up the date and let you know, okay? And after I see the progress of the class, if I need to have a makeup class, then I will let you know the exact date, okay? Okay. Uh,